Mr. B here. Identifying oxidation and reduction half reactions can be quite simple. If the oxidation number of an element increases during the course of a chemical reaction, then that element has undergone oxidation. Conversely, if the oxidation number of an element decreases during a chemical reaction, then that element has undergone reduction. In this video, I'll explain how to determine whether a half reaction is an oxidation half reaction or a reduction half reaction. Let's begin by identifying the half reactions in a simple synthesis reaction. Consider the following. When nitrogen gas reacts with hydrogen gas, ammonia, NH3, may be formed. To determine the half reactions in this particular reaction, simply first write in the oxidation number. The oxidation number of any element, diatomic or not, will be zero. In a compound, the oxidation number of hydrogen will always be plus one, except in a, in a compound known as a hydride, in which case the oxidation number of hydrogen will be minus one. To determine the half reactions involved in this process, simply separate the elements into two reactions. There is an oxidation react half reaction and there is a reduction half reaction. Oxidation and reduction both occur simultaneously during the reaction. To determine the oxidation half reaction, simply identify the species whose oxidation number increased. In the case of nitrogen, the oxidation number went from a zero to a minus three. That's definitely a decrease in oxidation number. The oxidation number of hydrogen, H2, began as zero and ended as a plus one. Therefore, in this particular reaction, hydrogen will undergo oxidation, which leaves our nitrogen as the half reaction that underwent reduction. At this point, it is obvious that the masses are not balanced in the two half reactions. So the next step in writing half reactions will be to balance the mass. On the left side of this oxidation half reaction, there are two hydrogens. On the right side, there is one. So the hydrogens may be balanced by placing a two in front of the H plus. In the reduction half reaction, there are two nitrogens on the left side, whereas on the right side, there is one. So we place a two in front of the nitrogen. Now that the mass is balanced, the charge must be balanced. In the oxidation half reaction, on the left side, the total charge is zero, whereas on the right side, the total charge is plus two. Two times plus one. So to balance the charge, simply add two electrons to the right side. In the case of the nitrogen, on the left side, the total charge is zero. On the right side, the total charge is a minus six. So to balance the electrons in the reduction half reaction, place six electrons on the left side. Now that both the mass and the charge in both half reactions has been balanced, now the charge must be balanced between the two half reactions. Multiplying the oxidation half reaction by three, which will cause this value to go from two to six, and this value to go from two to six. The next step is to generate coefficients 
based on the half reactions to fit into the chemical equation. So for the oxidation half reaction, we may place a three in front of the hydrogen. On the right side of this half reaction, there are six H pluses, but in the compound, there are three hydrogens. To allow the hydrogens in the half reactions or the hydrogen ions in the half reaction, to match the hydrogen ions in the compound, simply place a two in front of the ammonia. Now there are six hydrogens in the ions on the right side of the chemical equation, as well as six hydrogen ions on the right side of the half reaction. Since the electrons balance, they may be canceled. And in the reduction half reaction, there are two nitrogens on the left side, which matches the balanced equation, and there are two nitrogens on the right side, which matches the balanced equation. So, generally speaking, by balancing the electrons, we essentially balance the chemical equation.